Come for the data science, stay for the memes. Hello world, it's Siraj, and data science is the hottest career to get into this year. Every industry is collecting customer data and using it to make smarter decisions, which leads to higher profits. The demand to fill data science positions is through the roof globally, and forecasts reveal that this demand will only increase in the coming years. So to help you take part in this rapidly growing field, I've created a three-month curriculum to take you from absolute beginner to proficient in the art of data science. This open source curriculum consists of purely free resources that I've compiled from across the web and has no prerequisites. You don't even have to have coded before. I've designed it for anyone who wants to improve their skills and find paid work ASAP, either through a full-time position or contract work. You'll be learning a host of tools like SQL, Python, Hadoop, and even data storytelling, all of which make up the complete data science pipeline. Data science is the area of study involving extracting insights from data, and a data scientist sits at the intersection of math, software engineering, and data communication, or the ability to communicate insights from data. There are a lot of related positions in the field, ranging from machine learning engineer, to data analyst, to business analytics specialist, Usually, a data scientist is expected to formulate the questions that will help a business and then proceeds to solve them, while a data analyst is given questions by the business team and pursues a solution with that guidance. On the other hand, a machine learning engineer's goal is to build and optimize predictive models. There's a lot of intersection between data science roles, but the data scientist is usually the most senior role. For example, if we look at a data scientist job position hiring page at one of the big four tech companies like Google or Facebook, we'll see that they expect several years of experience and a relevant undergraduate, sometimes even graduate level degree. That's because they can afford to do that. Everyone wants to work there and they have more data than anyone else on the planet. So they set the bar very high. But don't get discouraged by that. If you're applying as a first time data scientist, it's best to avoid applying there and instead applying to a lesser demanding role like a data analyst. Data science jobs at smaller companies are much more forgiving and you can make up for both a lack of experience and any gaps in formal education by showcasing the depth of your skills. If you start your career there, you can work your way up to one of the bigger companies or of course start your own data science business. I've divided this curriculum up into three months. The first month focuses on data analysis. Month two is all about machine learning and the last month will have us learn production grade tools like Spark and Hadoop that data scientists use in the real world. Before I start describing the curriculum, keep in mind that we are practicing accelerated learning. Yes, each week of my curriculum consists of a full online course that's supposed to take several weeks, but we're concerned with efficiently downloading as much knowledge into our brains as fast as possible. To do this, watch course videos at 2x or 3x speed using a browser extension, dedicate two or three hours every day to studying, handwrite notes as you watch for increased memory retention, which has been proven, and complete just one of the projects of your choice from each course at the end of the week to help synthesize the ideas you've learned. Also, while you're learning, immerse yourself in the community by following this great list of data scientists. For the first week, we'll want to learn Python, perhaps the most important tool in the data science pipeline. It's a highly versatile programming language that's used across many different industries. edX has developed a great course made for absolute beginners to learn Python specifically for data science. It takes us from Python language fundamentals up to creating plots using real data. Additionally, I've developed a fun learn Python for data science playlist, so definitely check that out. Once we have a basic grasp of Python, in the second week, we'll want to take the statistics and probability course at Khan Academy. It's actually really fun. Khan Academy's website has gotten better every year. The course has interactive content and they make it feel like you're playing a game 
due to the mastery point system. It covers topics like probability distributions, random variables, and hypothesis testing, all of which are supremely useful in the data science pipeline. After we have a bit more of a mathematical foundation, we can start learning how to perform all sorts of exploratory data analysis techniques, some of which use probability and statistics. This is the process of summarizing the main characteristics of a data set. Georgia Tech released a course called Introduction to Computing for Data Analysis that demonstrates how to pre-process, analyze, and visualize a data set. The important thing about this course is that most of the focus is on data cleaning, and in the real world, data scientists will be quick to tell you that most of their time is spent cleaning data. Real world data is messy. It's not like Kaggle where we get neatly packaged data sets. It's unlabeled, it's got missing values, irrelevant features. So learning how to carefully sculpt a data set so that it's ready for further analysis is crucial. Speaking of Kaggle, the website has become a phenomenal resource for data science enthusiasts. It's become not only a place for data scientists to compete for prize money by solving problems for companies, but an incredible learning resource. In fact, Kaggle has a learn section that contains courses on a series of tools you'll need to understand data science. Each course is a series of well-documented Kaggle kernels, which are their version of Jupyter Notebooks. My only gripe is that there's no video content or assignments, but an awesome resource nonetheless. Definitely something to browse. For week four, spend the week solving a Kaggle competition that you personally find interesting. That's the best way to stay motivated. Pick a completed competition and briefly view one of the kernels to get some sense of what people have done before. Then create your own repository and get to work. Document the project very well on your GitHub profile so that anyone who views it can run the code if they follow your instructions, including any future employers. Remember, GitHub is the new resume. Now that we know how to clean a data set and explore its different features and relationships, we can start diving into the art of machine learning. Machine learning models help us derive insights from data sets, correlations, classifications, clustering, there's a lot of possibilities. There are several mathematical disciplines that make up ML, and I've got a cheat sheet for each of them that lists the most relevant parts you'll need to know in the video description. Columbia has an excellent course called Machine Learning for Data Science and Analytics on edX. It starts with concepts like search trees and linear programming applied to a real-world personal genomic data set to give us an algorithmic foundation. Then it moves into popular machine learning techniques, except for deep learning. Deep learning is the subset of machine learning focused on just one type of model neural networks. The online deep learning book, specifically parts one and two, will get you up to speed on deep learning very fast. So spend week seven reading that. Additionally, I've got a deep learning playlist on YouTube that's very extensive. For week eight, it's time for Kaggle project number two. This time with the focus on different ways of using either machine learning or deep learning to solve a problem. Our last month will focus on learning how the modern data science pipeline works. Data sets usually live in databases, so learning how to work with databases is important. Udacity's Intro to Relational Databases is a relatively short but detailed introduction to the basics of structured query language, or SQL, and database design, as well as the Python API for connecting Python code to a database. We'll also fit in another short course into this week on the other type of database, NoSQL. The Intro to NoSQL Data Solutions course by Microsoft on edX is perfect for this. It leads us through the three Vs of NoSQL, variety, volume, and velocity, by demonstrating popular examples like MongoDB. For week 10, we'll move on to Hadoop and MapReduce. 
As Google grew, it had to index more and more data, over a billion pages of content. And in order to cope, they invented a new style of data processing known as MapReduce. Hadoop was created to apply these concepts to an open source framework that anyone could use. Data scientists use MapReduce to process data frequently, and the intro to Hadoop and MapReduce by Cloudera course on Udacity is the perfect way to get familiar with these concepts. There's also another framework called Spark that is newer than Hadoop and is getting a lot of attention because it's useful in different ways. Think of it like an extension of Hadoop. Stanford has a one-day workshop on Spark and we can use the associated slide deck tutorial to learn more. When you're working on a team as a data scientist, often you're tasked with communicating your results to people in different teams, so important business decisions can be made. Microsoft has a course on edX called Analytics Storytelling for Impact that perfectly fits this use case. And for the last week, complete one more Kaggle project so you have three great demos to show the world. Once you finish this course, you can start applying for jobs, doing contract work, start your own data science consulting group, or just keep on learning. Remember to believe in your ability to learn. You can learn data science. You will learn data science, and if you stick to it, eventually you will master it. Oh, and find a study buddy to keep you motivated. I've created a data science in three months channel in our Slack group to help you find one. Good luck, wizard. I'm rooting for you. Please subscribe for more programming videos. And for now, I've got to clean my data. So thanks for watching.